I couldn't understand why the Lord had to tell people to choose life and not death. Until now that I'm living in this, they say millennial time, and we're trying to tell people to live and not die. And if you think it's about COVID, now COVID is a manifestation of what was already in people and their indecisiveness about choosing right over wrong. To live or to die, marriages, relationships, make this decision all the time. Should I live or should I die? Shall I stay or shall I go? Shall I give it up or shall I keep fighting? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. And so what I want you to do is, um, is open your Bibles real quickly to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 22. Proverbs 4 and 22, okay? And, and the reason why I want to talk about this is because success and failure is, is usually tied to a person. There's always going to be a person connected to whether you fail or succeed. It's up to you to recognize the one that you attach to or will be attached to, and hopefully it will be about you, about you succeeding and not failing, okay? If you're going to succeed, it will be because you made a wise decision to not allow people who have expired in the way of time in your life to stay in your life. When the expiration date comes, you need to gracefully allow them to exit and not try to hold on to them. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Holding on to the wrong people can cause you and influence you to make the wrong decisions. And in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 22, I think it's quite appropriate right now today that we learn to go back and rely on the word of God that has said. If you get the word, if you find the word, if you get the word of God on the inside, get the Bible on the inside, it says that the Bible will produce health to your flesh. Are you with me? Yeah. And you know what I like about that? Because I like to think that that means uh, if I got a skin problem, eczema, if I got a skin problem, cancer, if I got a skin problem, some type of, you know, disease, the Bible tells me that the word of God is the cure all. Fellow somebody. Now, Kobe just got here a couple years ago. Had some other post uh, viruses that was bearing a similar name. But your Bible told you that when Jesus Christ came as your substitute and died in your place, that every disease that was written in the book and every disease that was not written in the book was covered under the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And so we got to start talking like that. I kind of demonstrated it last week because I see church people, and church people, I don't know if they dead, dying, or alive, but they just don't seem to have no oomph to them no more. You know, even with, even with the soft drink with all the caffeine in them, they still don't have no, no get up. Hello, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we just walk around with our head down, you know? I like, I like hanging around people that's full of life, that's got something to live for. You know, hello, somebody. Are you with me? Yeah. So here he says that the word of God is health to my flesh, it's life to those that find it. Next week, I hope to produce this sermon I've been talking about for the past two weeks. And that is, I'm going to give five reasons why every believer needs a pastor. And in that sermon context, it's going to be a wealth of information about choices why we need and why God relies us, relies on us to make the wise choice. Behold, I said before you life and death, choose life. Listen at this here. This is why everybody should want to live. He said, because choose life so that you and your children mm -hmm. and all the rest, that's children, that's grandchildren, that's great grandchildren, that's born and etc. And I like to think primarily, first and foremost, to the men because the birthing aspect of that relies on the seed planted and that comes out of the loins of a man. Why we should be thinking about how are you going to be remembered? Are your children and your grandchildren are going to remember you? Are your sons are going to remember you? What are they going to say? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. They got to make it on their own. No, they don't. 
they need to be advised. Look here. Again. He said that the word of the Lord has to be found. Okay? Now what he's talking about is not your Bible. He's talking about revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge. Meditating on the word, meditating on the Bible, pertaining to the problems or the situation you're going after. God will come to you and give you insight. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Now, listen to me. Did you ever read in the Bible when it says, watch and pray? Anybody ever read that? Watch and pray that you enter not. He was talking to the disciples when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane about to go and die. He said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, if that be the case, then I think what we should be doing is remembering that God wants us to be mindful of what's going on. Are you with me? Yes. Mindful of what's going on. Watch and pray. How many of you dream? Anybody dream? I dream. I don't think none of these guys. Y'all dream? Y'all dream? You think it's a trick question. Y'all yeah. dream? Yeah. You dream? You dream? Huh? What you think? So the calendar? You dream? Yeah. Go ahead. You don't want to go out on strange people, places, and things you see in there? You don't want to go What are the stuff you are seeing in your dream? What your Bible teaches you about dreams is that when we are not in a place to readily receive instructions and insight from God, God goes back to the first method of communication, all the way back to Genesis, dreams and visions. They're still in place. And so what you see in your dream has a lot to do with what's going on in your life. If you want to curtail it, if you want to stop it, if you want to be something different, then watch and pray. So I'm supposed to see and then I'm supposed to pray about what I see. But I need to understand how to pray about what I see. You ever see these police videos that come on and it be clear and crystal clear and wrong and done and they find a way to unexplain it? And they usually win because they put a spin on it and show you that it can look differently if you look at it differently. Am I right, Mike? But what I see in my Bible, and then I see it in my dream, is because that's what God wants me to see, and that's what God is directing us to do right now. We need a praying church in this country right now like we have never needed it before. Amen. We need church people to get back to doing what God is calling them to do like they've never done it before. You've got to recognize when something is working against you where you are so low, so tired and so disinterested and so broken in your focus, you've got to recognize when your adversary is taking your most precious time with the Lord and turning it into something else. It may not be sin, just time-wasting things that won't allow you to do what you've been commanded to do. Luke 18 and 1 said, men should always pray, always pray, and not cave in and quit. Don't give up. But the truth of the matter is this, we don't pray that much. And here's why we don't pray that much. Y'all wanna know why we don't pray that much? Yeah. Because we don't get answers. Mm. Mm. That's the reason why we don't pray that much. Mm. Okay? We don't get answers. The moment God started answering us, man, we pray all the time. Mm. All the time. And why is it that we're not getting the answers? It's because nobody told us how to pray. They just say pray. Go pray. Take a five-year-old kid, ten-year-old kid, maybe a five-year-old kid. Get a stool, put them up to the counter, and say, now wash dishes. Never told them how, never showed them how, never demonstrated them how, and you expect them to perform a dishwashing procedure. No, nobody told us how to pray. They told us positionally how to get in a position to pray, but they never told us what to say. 
They said, God is a man, he can just talk to him any kind of way. Try to do that to the judge in the courtroom. And he's not higher than God, but yeah, he'll put you out or lock you up. And when you walk in and say, oh, now the honorable so-and-so, please stand. You don't say that, I ain't standing there, no man. Are you with me? And yet we don't give God the same reverence. We don't give God the same reverence. Worship. Anybody know how to worship in this church? Mm -hmm. They know how to play, but do y'all know how to worship? Mm -hmm. They know how to play, but most of the time, when you play, if somebody turn a light, um, carry on about you play, playing in a good way, do that inspire you? Of course it does. So when we got people that are playing and people that are singing, when you sing, do, do you appreciate people? Of course. Right. Did you know that God inhabits the praises of his people? Mm -hmm. Then why do you think when we come before God? That's why he says choose. Choose life. See, worshiping Claire, worshiping God is, is a life exercise. That's what it is. It's a life ex exercise. I worship you. Hearts of admiration. That's Jesus. That's real. I worship you. As a company of praise. He says, Chris, look at this. I worship you, hearts of adoration. Lord, I worship you as a company of praise. Let this temple be the where your glory is in and I stand in awe and worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Give the Lord the praise on you. 